I was one of those kids you see walking around zoos or amusement parks wearing a leash. Those were already a thing 20 plus years ago, but less common, and were initially only tied around the wrist. In my case, it was a necessity. I would always start wandering off from the rest of the family no matter what situation. This is one of the stories that led to me earning my leash. It happened when I was about six years old and I went to the zoo with my mom and sisters. Before every family outing, my mom made sure to give me the talk about not walking off again or face the consequences. My mom was a strict parent that made good on her promises. She had to, being a single mother of three. I didn't try to disobey her per se, but I often just didn't pay attention to the world and people around me. No different to this day. I behaved and followed the group for a while, but then a butterfly garden caught my attention and off I was. When I finally realized I separated myself from my mom and sisters again, I panicked and started walking around the zoo looking for them. Being afraid for my mom's reaction more than anything else. After a while, I somehow got it in my head that if I could just walk out, find our car and wait there, my family would eventually find me. So I did. I got lost within a couple of minutes walking around a strange neighborhood looking for either our car or the way back to the zoo. Nothing looked familiar. I started crying, and my mom was going to be so mad. Then, this man came up to me, just normal looking, about 40 years old, asking me if I'm lost. I explained I lost my family when we were visiting the zoo, and I'm looking for the way back. I couldn't believe my luck when the man told me he had just come from the zoo and saw a family there, standing near the entrance who were waiting for a little girl with blonde hair and a baseball cap but it was still a few blocks away, so he proposed I walk with him to his car, and we could drive the rest of the way back. Just the mention of his car finally made me hesitant. I told him I wasn't allowed to get in the car with strangers. My mom would be so mad. He then said something like, That was true, but I look smart enough to know I could trust someone. Don't remember the exact words, but something along those lines. Also, he added, he spoke to my parents earlier when they were looking for me, so he's not a complete stranger. That didn't seem right. I asked him if he really talked to my dad, who had died a year before, and when he said he did, I broke down crying uncontrollably. I still didn't understand the situation I was in. I was just really confused about everything and scared of how angry my mom was going to be after all this. Finally, my crying caught the attention of the security guard of a parking building we were standing next to, asking if there was something he could help with. The guy stepped aside with the security guard and started explaining the situation, but made it vaguely sound like he was my father and we were looking for his wife. The security guard seemed to believe him, pointing us in the direction right towards the zoo. The man thanks the security guard and proceeds to take my hand and walk away. The security guard takes a last look at me and asks me, in a comforting, friendly, adult-to-child kind of way, why I'm still crying. I tell him that my dad is dead. He looks really confused for a second, then asks if this man is not my dad. I tell him again, no, my dad is dead. In a split second, his whole face and posture changes, and he turns to look at the guy, who's trying to explain he never actually said he was my dad that the security guard must have misunderstood and he was just helping me find my mom. The security guard said he appreciated the man's help, but he would take me off his hands now and the guy immediately took off. I don't think there was much else the security guard could have done. I explained the whole situation and after making a phone call, he walked me to the entrance of the zoo, which was just around the corner from the parking building. From there, we were brought to the security's office where my mom and sisters were already waiting. I feel extremely lucky for the security guard being at the right place at the right time that day, and very grateful for the extra second of time he took that could have made all the difference. This happened one year ago. Today, while sitting in the hostel's canteen, I recalled that horrible night due to the rain outside. It was raining heavily that night when that horrific event happened. I had been living in hostel for about one year for my nursing studies. 
far away from my parents. My hostel room number was 230, which was on the third floor of the hostel, which I shared with Arya. Each apartment had two small rooms with beds. There was another room on our floor, room number 223. There was something strange about that room. I had never saw anyone entering or leaving that room in the last year. One night, right before going to bed, I asked Arya, Who lives in room 223? I have never seen anyone there. Room 223? You don't know about that room? Know what? Actually, I also don't really know, but my cousin, who is in final year, told me our floor is known as the haunted floor of the hostel. Haunted floor? But why? Yes, because of a rumor that two girls committed suicide in that room. After that accident, whoever stayed there reported that they could see those girls. Since then, no one is allowed in that room. Why didn't you ever tell me about this? I thought you knew it all. But don't be afraid. Just stay away from that room. It was one thing I did not tell Arya, that I didn't believe in this sort of stuff. It had been three months since I knew the truth about that room. But nothing like that happened that would make what Arya said true. So I just believed it was a hostile rumor. One night, it was raining heavily, which woke me up. What is this noise? Oh, it's raining. What time is it? It was 2.30 a.m. when I woke up. I tried to sleep again, but failed to do so. I thought I should take a little walk in the room, and that might help make me sleepy. I started walking when Arya's voice came from her room. Oh, Sophia, what are you doing in the middle of the night? I'm unable to sleep because of you. Sorry, I'll go take a round outside. I left the room and started walking in the corridor. That's when I heard someone laughing. And it was as I was walking toward room 223. And as I reached closer to that room, the laughing was getting louder. When I reached that room, I saw that the door was open just a little bit. I was happy, and I talked to myself. Finally, someone came to live here. The haunted floor rumors can end now. I was right in front of the room's door. And I tried to look inside, but the light in the room was low, and I wasn't able to see anything inside. I decided to meet them, so I knocked on the door. All of a sudden, the laughing stopped, and no one responded. So I knocked again. This time, a voice came from the room. Come inside. It was the voice of a girl. After hearing it, I went inside. But there was no one in the first room, and the lights were off. But the lights in the second room were on. And from there, someone said, We are here. Oh, okay. When I entered the second room, I saw two girls in white nightgowns sitting in their bed. I said, Hi, my name's Sophia. What are your names? Amelia, Emma. When did you come to live here? They did not reply. They kept staring at me. And then one of them said, We're playing a game. Will you play? 
This felt very strange to me. But I agreed to play with them. Game? Sure. Yes. Why not? Okay. Take a pen and paper from that table. The table was right in front of the bed. And there was a mirror attached to it. I picked up the paper and the pen from there. And just for a moment, I took a glance at the mirror. And what I saw in the mirror shocked the soul out of me. I was really scared. In the mirror, a girl's body was hanging from the fan in the room. The body was facing the wall, and it was slowly turning towards me. I wanted to scream, but was unable to do so. And when I saw the face of that body... <laughs> my whole body turned cold, which made me scream in horror. After that, I didn't remember anything that happened. Because when I opened my eyes, I was in the hospital. Arya, where am I? In the hospital. Hospital? But why? Teachers and security guards brought you here. Last night, I heard you screaming, so I rang the security alarm. We found you in room 223, and you are bleeding from your head. Arya asked me what happened, and I don't know why, but I never told her. And I've kept it a secret until now. So friends, the story ends here.